Hi, I'm Johnny, and you're watching the Hexy Beast. And on today's episode, I'm going to be doing my solo review for this game right here, Bullet or Bullet Heart by Level 99 Games. Anyway, let's get this one to the table and get it played, shall we? So this is Bullet. Assume the role of one of Earth's most powerful heroines as you settle their disputes with each other through excessive firepower. Use your actions to form patterns, clear your board of bullets and assault the opponent. Keep up dealing with the curtain of bullets coming at you each round and be the last heroine standing to win. Each heroine wields a different power that changes how you experience the game. Control sound, paper, technology, gravity, triangles and more. Four game modes. Do a solo run and score attack, have a free forward 2 to 4 players, form 2 player teams for a battle, or fight each heroine's dangerous boss mode by yourself or cooperate with others. So, let's see how it plays. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is lay out this board which is called the site, and then we're going to choose a character. And we get to choose from any one of the 8 characters provided, each coming with their own set of skills. And for the sake of this game, I'm going to choose Adelheid Beckenbauer. And then what we do is we're going to take one of these uh, action tokens and place it in the top space of her action point track. After that, we're just going to take her uh, set of pattern cards with her profile on it. And we're basically just going to set them aside to form a deck which we're going to draw into our hand. Okay, so we're going to be playing the solo boss mode today. So I'm going to take another player board and I'm just going to flip them over. And you will see that they each have a boss and their own tracks and stuff on the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put them this way around so that they're closer to the board during gameplay. As you can see, they each have uh, a certain ability of their own, which I'll explain when we get to them. But you're also going to grab these uh, boss pattern decks, give them a shuffle, and put them in the pattern deck space on this board. As well as that, you're going to take the five shield tokens and block each one of these spaces on the board. Just like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all these various colored tokens, place them in this white bag, and this bag is going to be known as the center. And we're going to give that a good mix. And we're just going to put that off to the side to draw from. Then basically all we're going to do is we're going to reveal a pattern for the boss. And then we're going to draw three patterns for ourselves. Just like this. And basically at this point now we're ready to fill our current bag. Which is this little black bag here. Um, and this is basically functions as an intensity track. So this will tell us how many tokens to put in the bag. But because it's the first round we're actually going to be putting ten tokens in the bag. Not this seven. But in the next round, if we haven't got rid of this shield token by getting six damage, we're basically going to be putting seven more into this black bag. So let's just put those ten tokens in and get to playing round, shall we? Okay, so the way rounds work in Bullet is that we're going to be drawing tokens from this bag and spending action points to perform these abilities on the board. So usually you could do this with a timer, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to. So let's just start drawing tokens. And the way they're placed is, so for example, this is a red two. First, it'll be in the second space in this red column by there. So we're just going to place that there. And we're going to keep drawing tokens and see what we get. And we get this yellow four, which means that's one, two, three, four by there. And we're just going to keep drawing until we end up either completing one of these patterns or finding a move that can help us complete a pattern. I'm just trying to find one that'll skip over for us. Because basically, if any of these spaces are blocked, Instead of going, say if we drew a three now, what would happen? It would go one, two, three. It would skip over the spot with a bullet in it. So let's just keep drawing. We've got a one in the pink. We got a three red. So that's going to be one, two, three. You may also notice this one has a star on it. That means if we ever manage to clear that using one of these patterns, we're basically going to be able to activate these abilities with the stars on them. So we're just going to keep drawing tokens. We're now on one, two, three. There we go, just like I said before, there's only a few tokens left in the bag now. One, two, three. As you can see now, yellow is now in risk, because if anything comes off the bottom by here, it basically goes onto our health. Which isn't good. If we run out of health, we lose. And then there's just a four pink, so that's one, two, three, four. Okay, so one of the first things we really need to worry about is this card here. And I think, looking at my abilities, if I use this one, I can spend one action point to move a bullet diagonally. So I'm going to do that. To put this three by here, that means we now got three in a row of equal value. If I didn't do that, by the end of the round, it would move all the bullets down by two. And that's definitely not good for us. 
So let's have a look what to do next. Okay, looking at this pattern I've got here, which basically means I need two pinks at the bottom and any token above it to get rid of the token by there, by there, and by there next to it. So let's see what we can do to make that happen. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend one, two, three action points. Let's move this down here, getting me the two I need for that. Then what I'm going to do is spend one more, move this here, which then gives me the three I need to go round. And so in this case, I'm going to complete this pattern using this pattern here. And I'm actually going to remove this bullet and place it on the boss board. So that's how patterns work. So this pattern would now be complete and this bullet would now be on the boss's incoming area up top here. Hmm. So we've got two action points left and the requirements for this pattern are already met. I could get rid of another token. To be honest, I could have been more efficient and used this one first. But what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to spend my last two action points just to bring this one down too. Use this pattern, which will allow me to get rid of these three next to two pinks by here. And that's just going to put this one token also in the incoming for the enemy. Okay, so now I've done my round, we're basically just going to check the enemy. So we've actually got those threes in a row, so we don't have to worry about this. So instead of moving two bullets down, we're just going to discard this one. And then basically we're going to check for the shield and it needs six to get rid of the first one. And so far we've only got two. Now we basically draw up to our intensity and get our hand size, which is three in this case. Which means I'm going to take seven tokens. I'm going to put them into the black bag ready for the next round. As well as this, the enemy will also draw a new active pattern, which in this case means that we need four tokens in a row with a red on the left. Okay, it's time to start drawing tokens. So the first token we've drawn is a one in the yellow. I'm going to draw another one and see what we've got. We've got another one in yellow, which is going to go over here. We've got a one in red. And I'm just keeping an eye on my patterns while I do this, because I'm almost pulling what I need, I think, for some of them. Got a one in green. <laughs> this could spell trouble. Um, we've got a one in blue. Ah, uh, see, I can't do that pattern anymore. Oh, well. Um, and then we've got a two in blue. So, based on the way this is looking, I think I've already got an idea. And this is a two in yellow, which is going to go over here. So... One thing I forgot to do was reset my action points. You also do that between rounds. So what I'm going to do actually is looking at this pattern by here, which is the red, red, blue, to get rid of these three bullets, is I might actually move these two across for two action points, like so. So now I'm going to complete this pattern, destroying the three bullets around that blue there. So this, this, and this are going to go into the bosses incoming. Then what I'm going to do is maybe, because I know we've got this four by here, but I'm also trying to think of how useful this yellow might actually be to me if I could get it in the right place. I don't really want to break this up and I can't get those two greens next to each other anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend two action points in order to draw another pattern to see if we get anything that's more hittable for us. And here we go. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to complete this pattern using this in order to send enough back over to the boss. Okay, so we got that requirement met. These three bullets go and I get a star. Okay, the star is important because what the star means is I get to activate both of these yellow abilities, which will give me one action point back and let me flip any token, which if we look at over here, it means that they're basically wild colours. Face down bullets in your side are all colours and have no numbers or stars. So, let's go check what's going on in the incoming. One, two, three in the incoming. I think we're going to be removing a shield this round. That's a good thing. And we've also got action points. Because that's fine as we speak. We've just completed this. That's another pattern done. Um, but I'm looking and I don't think there's anything else I can really do this round. I could get rid of more, but that would involve things moving down twice. Right now I've got the, the enemy pattern completed. Um, so I've still got the action point. I'm going to draw another pattern scene, <laughs> just in case we get lucky, you know. Um, and we've got red and pink. And no, that's just going to be it for me this round. So let's go to uh, check in the boss. Okay, so first the boss is going to check for this. And we have it completed, so it's just going to get discarded. It's not going to cause everything to move down to. Then what she does, she's going to check if a shield is broken, which means if we have six tokens here, which we do, one, two, three four, five, six. She's actually going to lose one of these shields. 
And because we haven't got enough to do the next shield, these are just going to get thrown back into the centre as well. So now, if we look here, she's going to activate an extra pattern this round, but we still have an intensity of 7. The next token is going to be 6 for us to destroy. So, in this case, what's going to happen is now she's going to draw her patterns, and we're going to get this pattern and this pattern. Oh, that's kind of lucky. Um, <laughs> to avoid this happening. But luckily for us, we've actually drawn one that needs two either side of two spaces, and this one needs two either side with nothing between them. So if I complete this one, I technically could complete both. So we should be all right there. Okay, so with another seven intensity in the bag, it's time to start drawing again. And <laughs> also don't forget to drop to your hand size and refresh your action points. Okay, looking at the patterns we got, we still got them left over from last round. We could have discarded them. So we got a three blue, which is one, two, three on the bottom. Blue is now in danger of causing us damage. Oh, two green, so that's one, two. As you can see, once you get used to it, it's quite easy to add the timer in and just get it done in three minutes. Um, like I said, I could interrupt at any point if I wanted to, in order to complete a pattern. Um, but looking at what we've got here, it might be a good idea, but I haven't got anything that would be 100% useful. This is a four, pink four, so actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop here, in order to spend one action point to do this pattern. So that's going to go there, and then I'm going to spend another action point to bring that one down. And then I'm also going to spend another action point to move this one diagonally into this spot here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete this pattern by here, which is these. And that will basically remove all three bullets from underneath. So that will be these two, this star, which will also get me a action point. And flip over a token to make it wild, which I'm going to do with this pink. Then I'm just going to keep drawing my tokens, which in this case is going to be a pink one. And a yellow one. Okay, so with how things are looking, we can actually put things in a position to make sure we don't get hit by those patterns. Um, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Should I try and get bullets off and get another shield? Or... Should I try not to get hit by those patterns? I think my best bet would have spent two action points to move these two down here and one more, oops, one more to move this down here, giving me the pattern I need for the boss. So at this point though, I'm kind of in trouble next round. <laughs> so anyway, let's just go see what a boss is gonna do. Okay, so first you're gonna check both patterns, which both of which are complete. <laughs> I've been very lucky with that. These get discarded. We have only got three here though. So it doesn't go away if you haven't completed one, but if you, you can complete multiple shields in one go, but anything left over after completing a shield gets thrown back in the bag. So we are another four tokens to getting another shield off. Um, and she's just going to draw another two for herself. And then we're going to draw back up to our hand size, refresh our action points, etc. Et okay, now we're moving on to the next round and we're going to start drawing again. And we've got two in blue. Uh-oh, we're going to start. They're definitely taking damage this round, I think. And even though we've got those three tokens, let's have a look at the pattern. We've got two in the green. So that's about it. Um, what else? One yellow. I'm trying to show you me taking damage, but I don't seem to be taking any. Okay, two blue. So that's one, two. Now, anything that goes in the bottom here is going to basically go straight over here. And if all four of these are full up, we're going to lose. And basically the way to win the game is to get all the shields off the boss and survive to the end of the round after that point. Uh oh, this isn't looking good for us. Um, okay, I think we should stop drawing right now and uh, try and figure out if we can get rid of some of those blues. So looking at the patterns I've got here, this one would allow us to get rid of three there. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to spend one action point to move this across. That's making this pattern viable. So we go down there. Um, I'm also going to spend an action point to move this down, because why waste it? Um, so that's just going to be this pattern, getting rid of these three bullets by here. No stars to worry about this time. But it does mean in the boss's round we're actually going to get another shield. So anyway, let's uh, crack on and see if what other tokens we've got to draw. So we've got a two green, which is going to go over here. And we've got... A three blue, which is also going to go on to us as damage. So I think you've got a rough idea how the game is played. So I'm just going to play the bosses turn out. And then 
we're just going to move on to what I think of the okay, game. Okay, so boss checks the patterns. We've got a red with any token below it, yes. And we've got three next to each other, yes. So these patterns are fine. We check the shield, we get another one off. And then it's going to be another eight intensity for the next round. And then we reveal two patterns, etc. And then this would get reshuffled as it's run out. And made into another draw power for her. So anyway, I'm just going to go get back to the table instead of playing the next round. And I'm just going to tell you what I think of the game. Okay, so now that you've seen how the game is played, it's time for me to tell you what I think. And the first category is aesthetics. And I have to say, I've given it a 9 out of 10 for aesthetics because I really like the anime stylings of this game. I think the theme is lovely. I really like the way that all the bosses increase and, and, and just look bigger and more epic. Um, I thought the theme in general was really good. I like the explanation of the universe in the rule book. It was very quirky, had a bit of comedy to it. I, I just generally enjoyed the overall theme of the game. I think it's colourful, everything's easy to read. So for aesthetics, that's why it's got a 9 out of 10. Okay, so that brings us on to gameplay. And I've also decided to give this one a 9 out of 10, simply because I really enjoy the puzzly nature of moving things around on the board. I also found that once you're used to it and you're adding that timer in, it makes the game a lot more exciting, if a little bit more stressful. Um, I like its simplicity, I think. There is a lot of challenge there. Some of the opponents are a bit like mismatched. Like some of them say they're easy. They're not really easy. Some are hard. It's difficult to find out, but there is definitely enough challenge there if you get good at the game. It's also nice that as the character variety increases, they, they all play very differently. So there's a, definitely a lot of variety in there if you want to keep playing. The one thing I will say, there may not be a lot of meat on the bones for someone if you're a big, sort of want something with a bit more complexity. But I quite enjoyed spending my action points to move things around and especially with the timer there, it made it really exciting. I was practically flicking cards into the discard deck, etc. So that's the reason I've decided to give Bullet a 9 out of 10 for gameplay. Okay, so we're now on to accessibility. In this category, I've decided to give it a 9 out of 10. I just really found the idea of just drawing tokens out of a bag and placing them in the column and number a really easy concept to grasp. I also knew exactly when things were going to go wrong because if someone reaches the bottom of that board, it's going to hit you. Um, it's just generally a really accessible game. It, the rule book was quite easy to understand. I found resolving the cards. Um, there was only a little bit of a hiccup when it came to some of the terminology, like the current and the income um, on some of the abilities. But apart from that, overall, it was really accessible game. I found it was really easy to learn and I was playing it a couple of minutes after I'd opened the box. So I was really happy with that. So that's why it's got a 9 out of 10 for accessibility. Okay, so that gives Bullet by Level 99 Games a total score of 9 out of 10, which is an amazing score for me. I have to say, I have really been enjoying this game. I like that it plays quickly. I like that I can play it pretty much whenever I want between other games. It's just really something I'm going to keep getting out on the table and I have a feeling it's going to appear in my top 10 later in the year. So anyway, if you'd like to look at this game or any of the other games behind me on the shelf, please feel free to check out the link to Firestorm Games in my description. As well as that, please feel free to smash that subscribe button over there and check out another one of my videos over here. Anyway, I've been Johnny. You've been watching The Hexy Beast. Thank you for watching and most of all, stay hexy everyone!